Hey, how's it going? Uh, so we talked about descriptive statistics, about mean and variance, standard deviation and stuff. Um, and that's as far as we're going to go with that for now. <clears throat> Those are the things we care about in some sense. What's the average something, right? And, and how dispersed is it? But next we're going to talk about one of the tools we use to make comparisons and analogies between a sample, something we can actually see, and a population, something we actually care about. Well, we don't not that we don't care about a sample but in practice we want to know about the big wide world out there not just the people we can get into our lab or the focus group we can run but our entire customer base maybe so um let me move some stuff out of the way here it always pops this in here okay um so what, the branch of mathematics we're going to use is probability okay so probability what is probability well an event's probability is the likelihood that an event will occur. Um, it's always going to be between 0 and 1. And we'll start out talking about events. We'll move pretty quickly to <coughs> values. But <coughs> the probability is always between 0 and 1. We can write that mathematically by... Well, usually we don't denote a probability P. And we say that P is going to be in, be in the set bounded below by 0 and above by 1. There's a 0% chance, that's 0, 100% chance is 1. And this this right here means is an, is in, or is an element of, and this is a set. What this set is, this set looks like this. So we have a number line, right, goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And we have 0, we have 1, 2, we have negative 1, etc. Well, all the probabilities we're going to be working with show up right in here. So this is probability. Probability works within this region. You're never going to have a probability of 10,000. Okay, <clears throat> so a probability of 1 means something is certain. A probability of 0 means something is impossible. Nothing is impossible. That's, well... Very few things are impossible, I suppose. Some, a lot, most things are very, very improbable. Um, but probability deals with math within this region primarily. Okay, so let's consider a, a random device. <clears throat> let's consider one six-sided die. Right? There are lots of possible events that could happen to our six-sided die. I'll draw a picture of one for you. Um, what could happen with a six-sided die? Well, we could talk about the number of times it bounces before it comes to a stop. We could bet on that. That's random. We could talk about, um, I don't know, what? Lots of things. Mostly what we care about, usually, is what's on top. So this person rolled a one. Right? So what is on top of the die? That's going to be the event that we care about. <coughs> so we can draw a distribution table. I'm going to say, let x be the number of pips on upper facet of die when it stops moving. Okay. What events can occur in this respect? What possible outcomes can happen? Well, we have a let's make a, a table here. We can make a distribution table. We have events and then events. And we have probabilities. Okay. Pardon me, I'm going to have to sneeze. <coughs> I apologize. <laughs> okay, so what are the events that can happen? Well, it's a six sided die, so there are six possible events that can happen. Now, this side could land up x equals 1, or x equals 2, or x equals 3, or x equals 4 or x equals 5, or x equals 6. The probability of each of these happening, because if it's a fair die, it's going to be 1 out of 6. Right? That's how dice are designed. It's supposed to be 1 in 6 chance of any given face landing up. Okay, so that is it. that table right there, that's a mathematical model of a die roll. That's what that is. Okay, It's not actually a die roll. We're not actually rolling a die. But we have, in some important fashion, delineated all the characteristics of a die roll that will allow us to make predictions about what might happen. 
So we have a mathematical model of a die roll, but in this case, all the events are just numerical characteristics, so we can simplify this. What we're going to do is we're going to redraw this table, but instead of, oh, I forgot to, hold on, but instead of using, there we go, instead of using x equals in events, we're just going to talk in terms of outcomes. So what are the outcomes? Well, let's redraw it. Where's my ink? There we go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create two columns. One is x and one is p. Okay, so x is now just going to be the number of pips, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and p is going to be 1 sixth again all the way down. Okay, now this is looking a little bit more mathematical. We don't have events anymore, because events could be anything, right? Something catches fire, or you end up at the wrong airport. But these are numbers. x happens. x is. So, <clears throat> because, because for every value of x, there's one and only one value of p, then p can actually be treated as a function of x. This is nice because now we can do to this die roll, into this model of a die roll, we can use math of functions. Right? f of x equals 6, and x is in this set. It's got to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And once we've done that, you know, it's a little formalistic, but once we've done that, what that means is that now we can draw this on a graph. So we're going to graph the probability mass function. That's what this is called for a, a six-sided die. looks like this. I'm going to have an x-axis. I'm going to have a y-axis, although I'm going to call this the f of x-axis. It's the same thing, really. And we have 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8, however many you want. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a little notch here at 1 out of 6. And we can plot our function. So what is the probability if, uh, f, of, if x is 0? The probability of x being 0 is also 0. Probability of x being 1 is 1 out of 6. Probability of x being 2 is 1 out of 6. Probability of x being 3 is 1 out of 6. 4 being is 1 out of 6. x equals 5 probability is 1 out of 6. Probability of x being 6 is 1 out of 6. And then we're back to 0. So it's 0 everywhere, in fact, except for these little spots up here. So those six dots describe the probability. OK, easy enough. Six outcomes, each one with the probability of one sixth. This picture then is another working model of a die roll. It shows their outcomes and their probabilities. We can draw another one. <clears throat> we could do, um, actually, yeah, let's do a more arbitrary one. So that's a die roll. That's a model of a die roll. Now we can draw a model that's more abstract. Where's my pen? There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to define, we're just going to define the function like so. f of x equals x over 10, and x is in this group. It has to come out of this group. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now what is this? Well, it's a model of whatever, right? It's more abstract. could be a model. We have a room full of 10 people. One of them is going to come out, and this is a model that describes what the likely number is that's going to be on their shirt. Why? Because, well, four of them have, four of the 10 people have shirts with a 4 on it, Three of the ten people have shirts with a three on it. Two of the ten people have shirts with a two on it. And one out of the ten people has shirts with a one on it. <coughs> it models that situation. It could be a model where we have uh, we have four different colored marbles in, a, in, a, in an urn. There are ten marbles. Four red, three blue, two yellow, and one white. And this tells you the probability uh, of getting a particular color. We just have assigned the events, white, yellow, blue, and red numbers. That's fine. It's an abstract model. It's a more abstract model, but it's still a model. And what this looks like is, well, our graph. And we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And we can graph this. It's going to look like so. The probability of getting a 1 is 1 out of 10. Probability of getting a 2 is 2 out of 10, 1 fifth. Probability of getting a 3 is 3 out of 10. Probab probability of getting a 4 is 4 out of 10. 
and probability everywhere else is zero. Right? Those are the four possible outcomes. Okay, now the, these are probabilities. These are how these work. In practice, they don't have very many outcomes though, so that's not that useful. Um, th these are what we call discrete distributions, right? These are discrete distributions. There's countable possible outcomes. Now, these models work really well for particular things like a die roll or a coin toss, but for most things that we care about, we, what we want to work with is continuous distributions. The reason is that if you want to know the height of the next person to walk through whatever door you're standing next to, well, it's probably going to be you or any or somebody else who lives with you, um, but it could be somebody else, right? Some some surprise guest who's going to come to visit. <coughs> you never know who it's going to be. Um, what that means is that their height, well, it could be any of the heights that human beings have. So, in practice, if x is a continuous vari random variable instead of a discrete random variable, then the distribution can look very strange. It can look like anything. Okay, could look like this. Could look like this. It's like a chi squared style. Could be uniform. Could be normally distributed. We'll work with a lot of normal distributions. It could look like any of those numbers, any of those distributions. Okay. In a continuous distribution, the probability of any particular point is not very large. So usually we talk about probability within a range. <clears throat> Sorry. So we'll be talking about continuous distributions next, and we'll pay extra special attention. Actually, I think next we're going to talk about the normal distribution, which is also known as the bell curve. Looks like that. And we'll be working with that. But it's a probability function. So probability is what we're going to use. Uh, it's, it's, this is a picture of likelihood. And that's where we'll go next. All right. Thank you, guys. Hope you're enjoying this. And, uh, yeah, more, more soon.